Okay. So welcome back to the LNX files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're going to use these tarot cards to do a what the what the check on Jennifer Garner, Ben Affleck. This was an idea I had on my own. Let's go. Oh, and by the way, excuse me, um, I came from hot bar class. So nowadays, because I'm still in the throes of grief, if I go to the gym, I will get on a treadmill and I will walk at 2.1 miles per hour, staring into the abyss, wondering where I am. So I was just like, Lennox, go to a, a heated bar class, let someone kick your ass and like, you know, scream out instructions. And I did that. This is how I look. But you know what? We real talking. Like we're, you know, we've known each other for years. This doesn't bother you. I mean, maybe it bothers you a little bit, but we're mostly okay with this. You know, once in a while. Okay, so I know we've done one other video on Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. I had the idea for this video today because I was poking around online and I saw this article talking about how poor Jennifer Garner, she's forced to look after her bratty fourth child, Ben Affleck, for the rest of her life. Anyway, so basically the article is talking about how even though they divorced in 2017, Ben Affleck has still pretty much been this responsibility of Jennifer Garner. And essentially what they say is on June 29th, 2005, Jennifer Garner married the man who would become her fourth child. What a problem kid Ben Affleck has turned out to be. Despite splitting in 2015 and divorcing three years later, Garner, 52, has nursed her ex-husband through his never-ending personal tumult. Addiction, rehab, relapses, and a string of failed romantic relationships, including one with the family nanny. So yeah, I mean, all those things have happened, and they showed a picture of her driving him to rehab in 2018 as he looks sweaty and gross and stopping at a jack-in-the-box drive through So this was trending back in 2018. Memories. So when I read this article, I was like, you know, I need to take another look at Jennifer Garner's chart and just see what it says about her seventh house ruler. And you know what it says? It says a goddamn lot. I mean, I don't know how we missed this last time, but here we are. So the last time we did a, re a video on the two of them, it was just one of those why didn't they work videos. And it, it gave us some answers. It was just basically like, whoa, things were destabilized and the love was gone. Essentially is what that those cards were saying. But now we have bigger pieces of the puzzle. So we'll take a look at Jennifer Garner's chart. Here it is. So she is Cancer Rising. So what that means is the seventh house ruler of her house of committed relationships is Saturn. Saturn for her is currently in the 12th house. Now that's already not a great place for Saturn to be. And that could mean a lot of things. It could mean the person you end up with has addictions or has affairs or it lives in isolation, is in a mental institution, might be very famous, you know? Um, also in isolation, might work in an, an area of government where there's a lot of isolation, might uh, work in hospitals as a doctor um, or other institutionalized fields, might come from a family where there's, a, there's enormous amount of grief or loss or death. So it's, a, it's an interesting house. It's very an intriguing placement. But obviously for her, you know, we can see that what this has meant is that she's married someone with, you know, addictions, affairs, and just a great deal of baggage. So that's where Saturn is. But there's more. If we look, Venus is there also, so in Gemini. So that means that things will change a lot. Uh, 12th house topics for her will be very mutable. They'll be very changeable. They, you know, or one could just say unstable. Venus is there also. So Venus in your chart, you know, it represents things that are Venusian. Love relationships. That's one of the most basic ways to understand what Venus represents. And her Venus is in what we call a malefic enclosure. So it's got Saturn on one side and then Mars on the other. So basically it's got these two sort of like mafia lords trying to squelch its light out. So this is someone that's going to struggle immensely with Venusian topics. That's going to have a lot of challenges in the terms of love, relationships, sex, romance, intimacy, the whole nine. Another very striking element of her chart is that she's got Mercury moving into a dead opposition with Pluto. So now we have an opposition to a malefic. So that's also very, very heavy, very, very challenging. And so we would want to look, well, what does Mercury rule in her chart? What themes and topics? Well, number one, the 12th house. You know, it's the natural ruler of Gemini. And it also rules, you know, communication, all forms, spoken, written, danced. 
And it's noteworthy to see that Pluto and Uranus are, Pluto's making that opposition, and Uranus is co-present there in the fourth house. So this is all happening in the fourth house, the house of home, family, parents of origin, and property. So this is suggesting that 12th house topics are going to trickle into her family later on in life. Heavy, heavy baggage. One thing I will note is that there is Jupiter in her seventh house, okay? So it's not all gloom and doom, right? The planet of good fortune, expansion, the greater benefic is just hanging out in her seventh house. So we have seen blessings there. I mean, she lives in a mansion of all the mansions in Brentwood. Like her house is amazing. Her kitchen is amazing. Like show me any Nancy Myers protagonist who has a great kitchen and Jennifer Garner will murder, she, not murder, Jennifer Garner will win every time. Now that money doesn't buy everything, but she has had luxuries and opportunities and doors opening for her and wealth and abundance and financial stability as a result of her partner, despite what a huge mess this man is. And that is also represented in her chart. So let's take a look at Ben Affleck. Now we've looked at this man's chart so many times, but you know, there's a lot going on. I feel like every time we look at it, we find something new. So Ben Affleck, as we know, Cancer rising, also like Jennifer Garner. So we want to look at what Saturn is doing in his chart. So interesting, Saturn is in his 12th house. Now that suggests that 12th house topics will, will maybe plague his, his marriage with his committed partner or partners. So I thought that that was very interesting that that marriage would be represented to him as a theme of grief, loss, isolation, which, you know, we have seen that coming in waves and in ebbs and flows, uh, ebbing and flowing in the man's life. Now, what's also interesting is that Mars is moving into a square with Saturn. Uh, so Mars in Virgo is moving into a square with Saturn. So for him, Virgo is ruling also his third house. So there's going to be friction in terms of communication, communication with his partner, but also public communication with the world. You know, I would imagine that could also be represented how they're hounded by paparazzi relentlessly. And also what's interesting, you know, one thing we've commented about Ben Affleck before is that he has Venus on the Ascendant in his first house. It's conjunct the Ascendant. And I have remarked how people who have Venus conjunct the Ascendant also are often very good looking. You know, I think Angelina Jolie has that. They often have very, very symmetrical faces and are believed to be good looking by many people. And Ben Affleck was like his, the younger him was like super handsome. Now he's kind of like old man, Massachusetts, right? So what's interesting about what Venus is doing is Venus is also the ruler of his fourth house, his house of home and family. And that Venus is squaring Pluto and it's squaring Uranus. So this would suggest that family, you know, fourth house topics, family, family of origin, built family, created family, and home and property would have disruptions to it, would have darkness, shadowiness to it, um, and that that would be an element that would be manifesting in his life at some point. There we are. All right, guys, so I guess what I want to ask is, like, what's going on between the two of them? Because Ben is so undateable that it's like, he goes back and forth between women. Is he going to try and like get married to his ex-wife again? Would she allow that? Let's see. Jennifer, Ben, Jennifer, Ben, helping or hurting the situation. And where's the energy heading? Okay. So Jennifer's external vibe towards Ben. Hmm. Interesting. N surprised, but interesting. Like there's something about this that I think is very interesting. Okay. Nine of cups. So Jennifer feels happy about something. She feels sort of pleased and self-satisfied about something. Something is working out. Now, was she rooting for this relationship to fail? That's really interesting. I, I would have assumed not. I would have assumed that she'd be like, oh, he could be Lopez's problem now. But maybe there was something about it that irked her a little. Okay. Or anyway, we'll keep pulling cards. Ben's external vibe towards Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, we know this. So we got the Knight of Cups in reverse. 
So this card has two sides to it. You know, upright, this is a very passive knight. This can be someone who lacks self-awareness. This can be someone who lacks compassion, or it can just be a dreamy person who's really up in their feelings, you know, and just moving very slowly, sometimes too passively. So when this card shows up in reverse, it can mean that the passiveness is receding, or it can just mean you're dealing with someone emotionally destabilized. So with Ben Affleck, I think we know which one we're dealing with here, like emotionally destabilized. So, yep, that's pretty clear. That's interesting. So he's in a place of need right now. And I'm wondering this right now, we've got something like kind of codependency going on for sure. Like you're sad. I'm happy you're sad and you're leaning on me because you need me. Oh, that is interesting. OK, we'll keep pulling cards. Jennifer Garner's internal vibe towards Ben. OK, interesting. Interesting. Hmm. All right. So we got the Page of Wands in reverse. So not what I was expecting, but this could mean a lot of things. So my first thought was, I was like, does this mean she doesn't want to start anything new with him or anything again with him? Because the pages are the one court card that can represent situations, particularly new situations, because they're so young. So this in reverse, it, I mean, it, she could just be feeling like this isn't the time to see if we can rebuild our marriage. This isn't, this isn't the time, you know, it, like he's fresh off of J-Lo. And who knows if they're even divorced or will divorce. But you know what I think this really means for Jennifer Garner? I think it's the concern for the children because they're, the pages are the youngest card of the court cards. And this must all be very destabilizing for the children because keep in mind, like, the children are the trickle-down effect of all this. You know, it affects them. They get hounded. They get followed. They don't understand what's going on. So I think that's probably where her mind and her heart is right now. Okay. Ben's internal vibe towards Jen. Hmm. I mean, interesting, I guess. Hmm. So we got the death card in reverse. So the death card upright, we know, card of transformation, of change. And the scary part about the death card is only crossing the threshold. And the promise of the death card is that you're going to be better off on the other side of this card, um, card threshold, um, even if the even if it's difficult. So with Ben, with this card in reverse, it would mean slow change towards her. Mm -hmm. Being resistant to change, being resistant to obstacles. It's interesting that we've got two horsemen here in reverse. So right now, I think it's just like he's in crisis and he's static, helping or hurting the situation. Yeah. I mean, this is very, very telling. So... We got the Magician card in reverse, so didn't we just last get this for JT, right? Where it, it's a very, like, foreboding card, where it's just sort of like, you know, the underworld is ruling things, things are so destabilized that you can't manifest anything benefic, that it's about, like, you know, obstacles and challenges for manifesting and for connecting with your higher self and for connecting with the spirit world that wants to guide you and with higher beings. So I thought that's interesting. Okay, and where are things heading for, between Jennifer and Ben? I mean, what we thought. I mean, it's, it, they're just really just telling us what we already know. So I think based on Ben's cards, things are just going to be static between them for the foreseeable future. But here's what we got. We got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. So this is pretty much what they already have. You know, the upright, this card of legacy, generational wealth, the Kardashians. You have so much money, your kids never have to work. You just pass it down, clean the money. They can be bird keepers if they want to. And in reverse, something's just uh, destabilized, essentially. Like, it could be the household. It could be how you made the money. It could be how the wealth is distributed. Or it could just be that this is slowly forming in the 3D. So we know that, you know, what they've built is going to be destabilized for the foreseeable future. Um, will they ever get back together? I mean, I would imagine... I would imagine Jen would never do that, but, like... Would, she, would Jennifer Garner ever remarry Ben? I mean, they're not saying no. We got the lover's card in reverse. So upright, man, woman, mountain between them. It's a card of choices and decisions and overcoming obstacles. So with this card in reverse, it can mean that the obstacles are being overcome. It can mean that. It, I have seen that manifest, where the obstacles are receding. You can just move forward. I'm sweaty. I'm gross. 
Mr. Peach is embarrassed. Well, buddy, this isn't the first time I've embarrassed you. So that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts about all of this. Let me know if you have any uh, comments about my lord would you ever date Ben Affleck like if it was like 2005 again would you do it put it in the comments like and subscribe and as always we'll do this again <laughs>